In the last 200 years, 20 planes, 50 ships, and hundreds of people have just vanished in a small area in the Atlantic Ocean. This is a part of the ocean called the Bermuda Triangle, or the Devil's Triangle. It's an aquatic graveyard where over the years, researchers have uncovered hundreds of wrecks. Scientific hypotheses have been crafted to try to explain what is happening here. The idea, the fear, has spread, sparking countless books and documentaries attempting to prove that there's something strange happening in this triangle of ocean. There's some kind of uh, anomaly going on down there that we can't explain. Something that goes on down far, far below the deepest uh, rays, the last rays of sunlight. In this video, we're going to explain what the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle really is and why this perilous patch of ocean has captured the curiosity and fear of millions of people. Hey, I'm excited to get into this story because it gets really juicy, but first I need to thank today's sponsor. Thank you NordVPN for supporting this channel. A VPN allows you to surf the internet safely. With NordVPN, you click one button and it connects you to the internet via a different country. There's a lot of reasons that one would want to do this. For example, I've been traveling a lot lately and I've been using NordVPN to connect to the internet via the United States so I don't get kicked out of like my email and stuff. It also allows me to watch Netflix UK, but these are just a few of the many benefits that NordVPN gives you. For a very affordable price, you can also be protected on Online. NordVPN has a threat protection tool that offers a wide variety of protections. It blocks malicious trackers and ads that you don't want, all kind of just in the background. You don't really need to think about it, and it is there. So if one of these many benefits sounds interesting to you, go to the link in my description, nordvpn.com slash Johnny Harris. Clicking that link helps support this channel, but it also gets you in on this exclusive deal that they're doing right now that's four months for free when you sign up for the two-year plan. Oh, and you get 30 days to try it out, and if you decide you don't need it, you can get all your money back. Thank you to NordVPN for supporting this channel, let's get back to the Bermuda Triangle. It's generally regarded as this area of water in the North Atlantic, drawn from Miami to San Juan to Bermuda. The mystery here kind of started back in 1492 when Christopher Columbus, who incidentally is getting a lot of airtime on the channel lately, for better or worse. This is where the biggest light bulb moment of the century goes off in this guy's head. <sighs> I know, I know. The sources are in the description. I'm sorry. Can we move on, please? Thank you. Anyway, Columbus is out there trying to reach Asia and he passes through this triangle of water. And this is where things get weird. Columbus kept a very detailed journal, which I have a first edition English translation of that I'm not freaking out about because I love old books. Did I need to buy this for this story? No. <laughs> Did I spend way too much money on it as an excuse? Yes. But while I have it, let's look at it. God, look at this freaking book. Gorgeous. Okay, anyway, on September 13th, 1492, Columbus says that as he's going along this route, something weird starts happening with his compass. On this day, at the commencement of the night, the needles turned a half point northwest. And in the morning, they turned somewhat more northwest. Oh, creepy, Chris. But it doesn't stop there. He also reported the sea rising and a strange light out in the distance. He described it like a wax candle moving up and down. What is going on here? The mystery continued throughout the centuries. In 1606, while traveling through the Triangle, a large English ship carrying 150 travelers became wrecked at Bermuda after encountering a huge hurricane. Even though this wasn't mysterious because it was just weather, it left an impression on how people saw this body of water. In fact, it is supposed that this shipwreck inspired Shakespeare's play The Tempest, which often referred to Bermuda or Bermudes as being vexed or cursed. Okay, but listen to this one. Next up is 1881. This ship is sailing from Liverpool to New York City when it passes through the Triangle. The people on board say that they came across a ghost ship with no one on board. There are varying reports on exactly what happened, but the people on board generally reported that some of the crew decided to get on the ghost ship, but then the ships were separated by a massive storm. When they were reunited with the ghost ship the next day, there was no trace of the crew. This stuff is kind of spooky if true. But wait, 
we're just getting started because when you get to the 20th century, that's when the Bermuda Triangle as a mysterious body of water started to gain a lot of attention. In February 1918, one of the US Navy's largest ships, the USS Cyclops, was carrying 300 men from Salvador, Brazil to Baltimore, Maryland. The route goes right through the Bermuda Triangle, but the ship never arrived to Baltimore. Despite being able to, the Cyclops never sent out an SOS distress call. No wreck was ever found. As one article published a few years after the disappearance said, usually a wooden bucket or a cork life preserver identified as belonging to a lost ship is picked up after a wreck, but not so with the Cyclops. She just disappeared, as though some gigantic monster of the sea had grabbed her, men and all, and sent her into the depths of the ocean. In an official statement, the U.S. Navy said that, quote, the disappearance of the ship has been one of the most baffling mysteries in the annals of the Navy. That's an official quote. Again, kind of spooky. Oh, and the Navy boats kept disappearing. In 1941, the USS Proteus, carrying 58 passengers and a bunch of metal, suddenly vanished within the Bermuda Triangle. And then one month later, another Navy ship disappears, 61 people on board, totally gone. But it wasn't until 1945 when people started to get really suspicious. This is when a bunch of World War II airplanes were doing a three-hour exercise over Grand Bahama Island, flying out and then pivoting back to their airbase back in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. But these planes never returned, and the disappearances just kept happening. A long-haul flight with 25 people and six crew disappeared in the triangle without a trace in 1948, and a year later it happened again to another plane of the exact same model. All in all, there have been over 70 mysterious disappearances here in this little patch of ocean, where all those years ago, Columbus noticed something strange happening with his compass. With time, more and more people started noticing. One writer in the 50s said, quote, There have been other disappearances in this backyard sea of ours, and always the record, when the account is finally closed, has an ominous notation, no trace found. And then in 1964, the term Bermuda Triangle was actually coined in an article. Vincent Gaddis asserted that, quote, sea distances are relatively short, referring to the Bermuda Triangle, and yet this relatively limited area is the scene of disappearances that total far beyond the laws of chance. People wanted answers. Ten years later, this book came out. The author goes deep, and he makes the argument that something is really happening in the Bermuda Triangle. It's not just bad weather. This mysterious patch of water is actually a gateway to something much bigger. And then he's not afraid to explore some alternative theories about ancient civilizations and energy that was left over from those civilizations affecting this area. It's magnets, it's crystals, it's wormholes. It's the ripping of space-time. These forces connect us to the physical potential of our universe all shown to us because of the mysterious disappearances of the Bermuda Triangle. No, no, no. Come on, guys. I hope no one was actually following me down that rabbit hole because you can't read a book like this, talk about a bunch of mysterious things, and call that evidence. That is not what this is. I was really into this for a moment. Actually, when I was going through all of the disappearances, until it started to become about freaking crystals and alien life coming to save humans from nuclear fission. We can't do this. We can't present a handful of data points, even if they are factually accurate, separated by hundreds of years and call that proof that this patch of ocean is cursed. What blows my mind is that this book, the one that really put the Bermuda Triangle on the map, sold over 14 million copies worldwide. It was translated into 22 languages despite being riddled with completely invalidating errors. I mean, what? Come on. I'm actually not surprised. I mean, look at us. Look at what we're doing here. We're sitting here eating this stuff up like it's ice cream. People love this stuff. Mysterious stories and finding connections in observations that we can see and understand. I know that, at least for me, no matter how data-minded and objective I am, I kind of get intoxicated by a good, mysterious story. Our brains are like built for this stuff. Especially when the storyteller throws in little embellishments like, despite being able to, the Cyclops never sent out an SOS distress call. This tendency is really concerning to me. And honestly, more and more as I realize how powerful of a tool storytelling is. 
especially visual storytelling, where I can layer in the music and the visuals to make your brain think that it is real. Okay, wait a minute, you're asking, is this a video about the Bermuda Triangle or is this Johnny Harris's current soul searching about factual accuracy and storytelling on the internet? It's both. But let's keep going on this Bermuda Triangle story because there actually is a very satisfying evidence-based answer to what is really going on with all these disappearances. Here we go. There have been some serious scientific hypotheses developed on what's going on here. They range from things like the Bermuda Triangle having a disturbance in geomagnetism, which throws off compasses and other navigational tools. Remember Columbus? Creepy Chris? Or methane blowouts, which is a real thing. We have these huge deposits of like methane under the ocean floor. And if these blow up, you get this massive explosion and then a huge crater that just sucks down anything that is floating on top of it. That could easily explain it, right? Okay, but then there's the plane disappearances. Here's another more simple explanation, hurricanes. The Bermuda Triangle is in the Caribbean, which does seem to have an abnormal number of high intensity storms. That kind of makes sense. And one popular theory is that these storms can cause what are called rogue waves, which are massive waves that reach 100 feet or more. Maybe it's those that lead to the disappearances. See, this is making more sense. You've got methane gas, geomagnetism, tons of storms in the Caribbean. It makes sense that this is a perilous place for planes and boats. These are scientific explanations that validate the Bermuda Triangle. We don't need Atlantis and crystals and aliens. We have geomagnetism and weather systems. Rational explanations for the Bermuda Triangle? No, 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 no. Shine the light, folks. Do not fall for this again. No, another trap. Me saying sciencey things like geomagnetism and methane blowouts can sound like I'm presenting strong evidence to you, but I'm not. I'm saying words. I'm speculating. Okay, so will we ever get to the bottom of this? Well, yes, we can. But not by listening to me tell you stories about ghost ships and mysterious navy disappearances, or even 100 foot waves. Instead, we need to approach this differently. Humans have developed an amazing tool for seeing reality. Instead of relying on our own observations, which usually need to be couched as stories, and that are limited by how much we can hold in our brain at once. Instead of this, we can collect hundreds, thousands or hundreds of thousands of observations about the world. And they don't have to fit in our brains all at once because we can record them over time and then process and aggregate them with math or maps. And if you did that, you would see that of the tens of thousands of recorded accidents or casualties at sea, recorded over the course of 20 years, there wasn't anything out of the ordinary here. It doesn't even make the top 10 most dangerous ocean regions in the world, at least according to another analysis, another data set. We wanted to make damn sure on this, so we reached out to Lloyd's List, which is a shipping publication who graciously spent months aggregating data, tons of data, about marine casualties out to sea. We found that 1.8% of all vessels everywhere in the world have some casualty, including mysterious disappearances. 1.8% and that of the 8,634 boats that passed through the Bermuda Triangle, there were only two casualties. 0.02% of the boats that passed through here had an accident. 90 times lower than the global average. That was for 2021. So yeah, that's the evidence we should actually be looking at and talking about. It's not as tantalizing as the stories told in this book that sold 20 million copies, but it's true. It's what actually happened. And the beautiful thing is, you can then go and look at my sources, look at the data sets that I used, and you can interrogate them. And you can come back and tell me that my data is weak because of the way it was collected and what was left out. That's called discourse. And it is the foundation of how we know what we know about the world. All of us need to be vigilant of this. Perhaps me more than anyone. I'm a storyteller. But I also want to be a communicator of true information about the world, to communicate to you. And yeah, we'll definitely disagree on what that information means and how important certain things are, interpretation, opinion, etc. But I'm here to make a further commitment to going the extra mile to gather the best truth I can, to make sure that it's actually real. So 
Thank you for being here, for being a part of my discourse, my learning, and to check me on this when I get loose, and to make sure that together we don't let the power of story get in the way of the power of truth. Hey, thanks for watching. Something I didn't show in the video was this model plane that Nick, our studio manager, made. It's a TBM Avenger, one of the Flight 19 planes. <laughs> Nuances, man. I really appreciate you being here. It's wild to see this channel grow and even wilder to see the team behind it expand. Like, there's a lot of people behind the scenes. If you want to know more about how we make these videos, there is an entire universe behind the scenes that makes this all possible. And we make a behind the scenes vlog every month that we publish for you to watch if you are a member of the newsroom, which is effectively access to scripts and interviews with experts that I do that I just give you the full version of, custom tracks of music from our composer Tom, and this, this BTS vlog. So the newsroom is what I'm calling our Patreon. It's an extra video you get every month. You also get to have an influence on what stories we do by voting on polls that we are gonna be doing in the newsroom. Also voting on titles and thumbnails. If anything, your support will allow us to keep doing what we're doing and more. To focus on working harder for rigor and truth and reporting and journalism. If you're unable to support financially, please just keep watching the videos and commenting and sharing. At the end of the day, having the audience here to show up and be a part of this discussion is the best support we have. So if the newsroom sounds interesting to you, check out the links below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Several investigators of the Bermuda Triangle mystery have suggested that alien intelligences may be interested or even concerned in the possibility that our development of nuclear fission for warfare may be threatening the existence of civilization on our planet, as it may have previously destroyed other civilizations on this and other planets. The time span of rational man on this planet, of the intelligence potential and com comparable to that of today, may extend back 40 or 50,000 years. Oh, this is good shit, dude.